Hey guys, Khali from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here with another episode of The Daily Show. So, as you can see, we've changed the title to The Daily Show. We're not going to be talking about daily news like we used to. We're going to do a different spin on it. So I'm going to pick a particular topic that moved me or has an impact on me and I think that you guys will be interested in. So in this particular video, we're going to be talking about South Africa's best talent. And the reason I've picked this topic is because of the culture camp. Now, CSA recently announced that there's going to be a culture camp where a group of 33 players are going to be going on a camp from the 18th till the 22nd of August, where they're going to be obviously trying to improve their chemistry and they're going to try and create a team culture that is for the betterment of South African cricket. I'm going to read to you a bit of that particular statement from CSA and what they had to say so that you guys can also kind of be up to date with wh exactly what is happening. The protest men's high performance squad of 32 will assemble for a culture camp in Skukuza from 18 to 22nd August 2020. Topics that will be workshopped by the players and team management include the team's identity, the team environment, the team performance. And this is kind of a perfect time for them to actually do this with everything that's happening in South African cricket. But I want to go and talk about the particular players that they've picked. So off the bat, you can see that Faf Duplessis and Janice De Brain are not in the squad. Faf Duplessis is going to be with his wife who's giving birth to their second child. And Janice De Brain has noted that family reasons is the reasons why, personal family reasons is the reasons why he won't be a part of it either. I've tried to split it up into different groups to kind of give an and understand or get an understanding of where the squad is going in the future. We can obviously see that with the names that have been given, it's for Test Cricket, it's for T20s, and it's for ODI, so it's for all formats. But what was key to me is actually splitting them up into different groups. So I'm going to explain those groups to you one by one. So first of all, I'm going to start with the senior experience players in the squad. What I mean by that is it's the guys that are older, so closer to 30, the age of 30, or past the age of 30, but they also have experience internationally or have caps behind the name from an international perspective. So as you can see in the bottom of the screen, we have the likes of David Miller, Dean Alger, Dwayne Pretorius, Quentin de Kock, Debray Shamsi, Temba Bavuma, and Keshav Maharaj and Handy Klassen. So we have all these players that kind of the senior players in this in the side with regards to age and international experience now obviously they hold the key and they are the core of the side with regards to how the team is going to move forward they're going to have to give some insights into the younger players and the less experienced players on how they should approach certain games how they should go about thinking how they can prepare for certain bowlers that they faced etc etc and give the insights that those players that don't have the experience need with the likes of hashim amla um vernon philander dale stain and soon i'm thinking faf to proceed to once all of these players have retired and able villiers as well they've all retired what happens now is that these players need to now step up and be those leaders in the side so I was, I was of the opinion that South Africa has lost a lot of the experienced players and it's been difficult for them to replace those key guys like Graham Smith in the past, Shark Callis in the past, Mark Boucher, Sean Pollock, so many, Mackay and Tini, so many great legends of the game have moved on. JP Dumini as well, Robin Peterson, so many players have moved on and they have yet to be re completely replaced. These senior ex experienced players, it's their time to now step up and be the leaders in the side and the senior guys in the side. Another group is, I'm gonna to stick to international experience over here, is the young experienced players. Now these players are the guys that have international caps behind them, but they are quite young and they're still growing with regards to age. So Lungin Kidi, Aiden Markram, Antile Pechakwayo, Kaji Sorabada, Andrik Nokia, they've all played quite a few games for their country. And now I've incorporated all the experience with regards to the amount of caps played. It's not just regard to one format. And if you combine it all together, they've played quite a bit of matches for their country. So they're going to be the key between the new generational talent and the old generational talent. They're going to be that middle guy that's going to be able to give these players the, the easy transition into the squad and into the side. 
I think that they are going to be the key to the future of South African cricket because they are the future leaders. They are the future experiences. They are the next big legends or the future legends of this country. So I put them into this, to this particular category to kind of split it up and show you guys this is what their role should be within the side. Now, I'm no expert and I'm no selector, um, so I'm just giving you this from my point of view. The next important group that I've that I've split it up is to the guys I've called it age experience. Now these are the guys that are experienced by age, but they don't have the international experience to back it up. So guys like Sasanda Magala, Rudy Second, Riza Hendricks, guys like Buren Hendricks, guys like Darren De Pavlin, John John Smuts, Junior Dala, Peter Malan, Pait van Bullion, Rassi van der Dissen. These are all guys that are experienced by age. They've played a hell of a lot of games for their domestic sides. They've been, some of them have been leaders within that side as well. So it's incredible what they can add. They can add value with regards to cricket knowledge, cricket experiences, mentality, uh, fitness regimes, eating plans, or whatever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They can provide a lot of information for the young experienced players, as well as the new young talent that is coming into the side. So they're going to be key also to keeping the balance especially in this transitional phase, they're going to be able to come here and add that experience with regards to from a cricketing perspective. Now, the only problem I have with these players are, I mean, I'm a, I'm a guy that likes the younger generation to come through and I like to see young talent and watch them grow with the side. With these particular players, they need to hit the ground running to keep their spot. They're obviously in competition with a lot of different people. They're in competition with the young budding talents that are sitting in domestic cricket, wait, knocking on the door to play South African to play for the national side, as well as trying to keep their keep their spots in the side from the younger talents that are in the squad already. So they're going to be key to the culture, to everything that, with regards to from a cricketing perspective. So I think if you guys think that I'm talking at the at the bollocks, then put it in the comment section below and let me know what you guys think about it. But this is how I see the squad kind of forming or formulating and growing, etc. The last group I've split them into is regard to young talent. Now these are the obviously by the title the young guys in the side that are the future stars of South African cricket. As we can see, CSA have, have trusted a specific group of players with regards to Pion Futain, George Linder, Yanaman Malan, Keegan Peterson, Carl Verena, Lutus Opamla, Senaran Mutasami, Zubair Hamza, and Clinton Stearman. Now, Clinton is probably the newest one out of all of them. He is actually the newest one. He hasn't played for the country ever yet. We only saw him really in that 3TC cricket and for the Warriors. So he is a new guy that they've actually blooded in. It's really great to see that. And I'm going to try to be getting an interview with Glenton Stearman soon so that we can get his experience with regards to the sculpture camp and everything that he's has been going through over the last couple of months. These particular talents are the future of our cricket. They are the guys that are going to make it easier for next the next generation to ease in. I think they will work hand in hand with regards to the young experienced players because, I mean, they will obviously know them very well. But they'll also be pushing the senior experienced players and the age experienced players to become better cricketers, to keep their spots in the side. This is not only a learning curve for these players, but it's also a chance for them to show that they can be the future stars of the South African team. So I want to know what you guys think. Ultimately, that is what this is all about. So I want to know what you guys think about the particular groups that I've put them in. Who do you think is South Africa's best talent? Are there maybe guys that are in the domestic side who have not been picked in the side that you think should have been in the squad? I mean, let me know in the comment section below. Help us share this video and help us grow this channel to, to new heights. We also want you guys to download the latest issue of the magazine. You can get the first two editions that have been released. The first one is on resilience and the second one is on leadership. So please go download our latest magazine and subscribe to the edition so you can get the new magazine to your inbox every single month. Thanks, guys, for all the support. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys very, very soon.